Well, here we are doing a little preseason scouting, early season, the summer months, and I do most all my scouting this time of year in the evening. Basically what I'm doing is I'm driving to the end of the farm and uh, we're gonna be scouting basically the crop fields and the, and the food sources. Uh, but I'm gonna go down to the end of the farm and I'm just gonna kinda ease my way back up uh, to the farmhouse and we're gonna stop in some of these different fields and basically just glass. Uh, we're just glass and deer. couple of deer out in the hay field right now uh, and it's hot but they just cut this today and you can, I mean I can smell that fresh alfalfa got to have that food there's no acorns yet and uh, I mean this is this is deer candy to them right now we're out uh, in an alfalfa field here and it actually just goes and breaks up over the hill here and there's usually deer on the other side so I'm just gonna kind of ease up to one of these hay bales and I'm gonna glass over the edge just to see what's out there. But as I get closer to season, now I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for those bucks because they, their antler growth is pretty much completed. And you know, I, at that point I can tell what bucks I have and hopefully compare them to some of the trail cams that I had from last year. You know, and just, and, and I'm also paying attention at that point where they're coming to, where they're spending their time. Uh, you know, that'll tell me where kind of the travel route of that deer. But right now, these deer are just coming out in the evening to feed. And it's, it's just, it's just a lot of fun to see them. One of the most important tools that I use this time of year for scouting, obviously, is a good pair of binoculars. So whatever you're using, make sure you have a good quality pair of binoculars when you're doing your early season scouting because you're doing a lot of glassing in low light. See, they've got to have this new growth. These does, they have to have that new growth uh, for lactating purposes. Uh, the South Alpha gives them uh, a great supply of milk for those little ones. And uh, know that uh, in a few months, I'll be in a tree stand waiting for them to come walking by. All right, this time we're going to show you how to sight in the Alpen Apex scope. Now Ryan's got his AR-10 and he's got the Alpen Apex 4.5 by 27. Now he also has the sunshade and the honeycomb on it and it comes with the scope. And what it does is it filters out all the sunlight that we're dealing with here today. So again, your gun would already be bore sighted like this one is. Take the first shot and then we'll show you how to make the adjustments after that shot. All right, so as I said, the next step was to bring the crosshairs down to the bullet. But before we do that, we're gonna take the caps off and we're gonna pull the turrets off, okay? And there's three set screws in there that we're gonna loosen up. We're gonna go ahead and make those adjustments, get everything sighted in. And when we finalize the sight in, we're gonna tighten those set screws, put the turret back so we have a zero position on it, and then we'll put the caps back on and we're good to go. The next step now is Ryan's going to hold the bullseye on the red dot, and I'm going to make adjustments to bring the crosshairs down and over to the bullet. And that's what we're going to do right now. Pretty close, aren't we? Yeah, just hair to the right. I got to go to the, to the left. It's got to go left, right? Or not? Yeah, I got to go to the left. Are you on the Yeah. Okay, so I think this is right. Good. And I got to go down just a little. Yeah. I don't know. Where are you? Just the side of that red, but I pulled. So we can pretty much assume that we're 
We're on, you think? Yeah, I mean, it's in the red. All right, that's all it takes. Three shots, we're in the red. Hi, I'm Rick White with Alpen Optics, and I want to talk to you today about the new Alpen Shasta Ridge binoculars. Now they're lighter than the older Shasta Ridges, new sleek design, fog proof, waterproof, BAK4 prisms, phase coated, and the lenses are multi coated. Inexpensive pair of binoculars with great quality. So if you're looking to save a little money, but still put quality in your backpack, make sure you check out the Alpen Shasta Ridge binoculars. Well, I'm out doing a little bit of late evening scouting, just looking for deer and waiting for them to come out into the field. But I've got a new pair of Alpen Teton binoculars. You know, a lot of times people will ask me, what binoculars are best in low light situations? Well, that's simple. The answer is the Alpen Teton binoculars. And the reason for that is they have the Abbey Koenig prison, which simply means it allows 94% of available light to get through these binoculars, making them a excellent pair of binoculars in low light. So if you're looking for a pair of binoculars that will see detail into a dark timber right now, this time of the evening, make sure you check out the Alpen Teton binoculars. You'll be glad you did. Oh, here's some deer coming out right now. product that I'm real excited about, the Alpen Shasta Ridge 4K action camera. Now there's lots of features with this camera, but I'm just going to go over some of the ones that I really like. First of all, it comes in a waterproof case, and when in the case, it's waterproof down to 100 feet. Now it comes out of the case real easy. The other nice thing I really like is this camera by itself outside the case is actually waterproof down to 15 feet. Uh, so if I'm setting it up in the rain or, or drop it in the water, I'm not worried about it. Uh, now some of the features that I really like, the attachments that come with it, one of them I really like is the stake. Uh, I'm a big turkey hunter and I like to use these over my turkey decoys, but you just screw, screw the stake in, stick it in the ground, and uh, you know, it does the rest. Lots of other attachments and most other manufacturers' attachments will fit with this camera as well. So it's really endless when it comes to all the things that you can do with it. Now it comes Bluetooth with a remote, and this remote, you can just put it on your wrist. You can actually run it with the remote. You can, you can start the video and or you can take photos, and again, 4K photos with the remote. Now one of the other features I really like is it's Wi-Fi, and you can attach it to your smartphone. And when you've got your smartphone attached to the camera, you can run everything with your phone, and you can see exactly what you're filming. I mean, what a great camera with a lot of great features. Doesn't get much better than that. If you're looking for a great action camera, make sure you check out the Alpen Shasta Ridge 4K action camera. You'll be glad you did. Fun. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of On the Hunt with Alpen Optics. I'm your host, Rick White, and, uh, and on tonight's show, I've got two guests. Mike Dio Giovanni and Rich Powerbach. And we have, and I love this, we have another special at the end of the show. So sit back and we'll be right back with you.
Welcome back, everybody, once again to On the Hunt with Alp and Optics. I hope everybody's doing good this evening. I know that I certainly am. Uh, anyways, like I said, I have two guests this evening. Uh, guest number one, Mike Deal Giovanni, and he's been on the show before. And a new guest, uh, one of Mike's good buddies, Rich Powerbach. Uh, but we're going to start the show off with, uh, with uh, Mike. And uh, because of how we're running the show, we can only have one at a time. And we'll finish up with Rich. But uh, Mike, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Rick. How you doing? Good. And I know you've been on the show before, but give the folks just a, a little rundown uh, on some information about yourself. Um, I'm basically born and raised in the state of New Jersey. And uh, I've been hunting now for 35 years and just love being in the outdoors and taking care of kids that need to be in the outdoors and, and, you know, and scouting and doing everything else. I mean, New Jersey is a small state and the people don't understand. Everyone says, oh, New Jersey, New Jersey, what do you have there? We have everything. I can go 80 miles. I can be on a beach. I can go 10 miles. I'm in the stand. So it, it's, it's an awesome state. And here's the best part. Our sweet Jersey corn just came out. Our super sweets coming out next week and our tomatoes and peaches. So how can you beat it? And I'm sitting on my deck out here enjoying mother nature. You know, the only thing that could be any better is if you could possibly put a deer stand on the beach. Oh, actually, <laughs> Sandy Hook, New Jersey, which is a federal ground, has some of the biggest deer population. Literally, Rick, I did a job on Sandy Hook. It was a sewage treatment plant because they have the Army barracks there. If people are from the East Coast, they know. You wouldn't believe the bucks are on this island. And it's literally it's a, it's a peninsula. It's not an island, but... Literally, Rick, I'm talking 150s, 160s, walking in the sand. That's fantastic. So we have everything. Yeah, you know, I, I filmed a, a, a young lady uh, years ago in New Jersey on a deer hunt. And, and you're right, it's, it, it's, it's really underrated and it's a phenomenal, a phenomenal time. And it, it's just really cool looking out there. But uh, what do you got planned for this uh, upcoming fall? What do you got going on? Uh, this summer, upcoming fall, um, I'm doing uh, October 5th. I'll be out in Illinois. I'm um, hunting seven days out in Illinois. And then um, <clears throat> then back to Jersey. And then I'm going back out to Illinois in November for a gun hunt. And then, of course, then I'll roll into PA deer season where I can go out there with the rifle and uh, maybe do a little bit of bow hunting. And, um, and we'll go from there. I mean, I have a lot of stuff planned. It's just getting the time to do it. It's hard. Uh, my daughter's leaving for college in a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's, hey, hey, congratulations! You joined the ranks. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's going to be a big step. We got to move her in in a week and a half. So, now uh, my plans right now is to go out into the field, enjoy Mother Nature, enjoy the hunt, and create wild memories. Man, just let it happen. That's, That's good. It. Now. Uh, your season uh, comes in uh, sometime in September, I believe. Our season starts in 24 days, September 11th. How many hours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and it's funny. It's 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 funny because I'm I'm ready. I got cameras out soaking right now, and I wish I would have pulled them last weekend, but I had to work. Um, I'm sure I got good ones on there with the breast cameras. So, good. but well, let's let's talk a little bit about early season deer hunting uh you know and and your area might be possibly a little different than ours i mean here in iowa we have a tremendous amount of food whether whether it's oaks and we've got tons of acorns this year uh but alfalfa and corn and beans and and wheat i mean it's it we've got it all yeah uh what uh so what what are your strategies out east as far as early season deer hunting well it's funny you say that rick because my early strategy is you know, the corn's up, the corn's eight foot high, deer ain't leaving the corn. So um, our property I hunt in the state of New Jersey, we have a lot of logging roads that lead to that. So basically my position is <laughs> I have a stand that I call the Elite 35 that is based on a logging road. And the reason why I call it Elite 35, because I used to shoot Elite, but I don't do it anymore. Um, it's like a go-to guaranteed if you need to harvest a deer, just sit there in the morning for the first hour and sit there in the evening for the, for the end of the hour. And you will, you will see a deer. And a lot of people that, you know, 
that hunt with me know everything. They were like, where are you going? I'm going to Elite 35. Actually, I put up one of my good friends in there last year, late season, and uh, he, he said, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's a crossroad. Basically, you have two rows that cross. The field's only 80 yards off, and it was awesome. It's, it's one of my best go-to spots. And, of course, in the state of New Jersey, we have to kill a doe first before October 1st to harvest a, a buck. So it's called earn a buck. Right, right. Well, you so, know, um, our season here in Iowa and in a lot of the Midwest states, you know, opens up around October 1st. And we do open October 1st here in Iowa. Yeah. And my early season hunting uh, really is, is pre primarily evening hunts and around food. Uh, I've got some stands uh, not far off, you know, those food sources, those deer will come in, get close to those food sources and stage in that area and then generally walk out into the food, you know, that last bit of light. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a very effective and, and quite honestly, if I'm going to take a doe or two, uh, I like to do it early season. Oh yeah. Early season is the best time to do it. I mean, it's, they're very patternable. If you run the breast of cameras, you can know exactly what time they're coming through. You know what time they're coming back out. And you can base your hunt on that time frame where I know that, hey, when I when I pulled my breast of camera, I see between 450 and 530, I had this many deer coming through. And then after that, there's nothing. So I look at those camera pictures. And I'm going, why is there nothing? Because they're already going back to bed. So you can be you can base your pictures that you use to use that to your strategy and move your stand and also wind wind locate uh wind direction sorry so i mean the state of new jersey is great we have a ton of deer if you need to kill deer you can do it anywhere in the, in you know in in the usa but new jersey you got to hammer them because we're overpopulated way mm -hmm. too many deer do you do much calling early season? Um, I'll do a form ball a lot of times, which we can do early season, which you can draw, you know, draw one in. But most of the time, no, I don't like to do it because basically you're hunting in either a T-shirt or shorts getting eaten by mosquitoes. So it, it's hard if you want to start calling. But, you know, it's, it, it's just a – it's a sportsman's paradise in the state of New Jersey. We have an early season. You can kill a velvet buck. There's plenty of velvet bucks still around. And I haven't got any pictures of a hardhorn yet, but it's close. Rick, I'm saying next week, a week after, I might have pictures of velvet buck, uh, hardhorn. Yeah, see, our deer typically go hardhorn uh, generally that first, second week of September yeah. uh, is generally the case. And, and you know, one of the reasons I asked you about calling, and I've had uh, – I've had uh, my phone's ringing and my wife's phone's ringing and, and, uh, but, uh, um, you know, last week on last week's show, I had, had Edwin Church, Mr. Wingbone himself yep. on, and we had talked about giving away a grunt call. So when we started talking about early season calling that, that reminded me of that. So I didn't want to forget, but, uh, I, we do have a winner. Uh, Mr. Phil Smith has won himself a Mr. Wingbone's uh, grunt call. So uh, we uh, uh, took everybody that watched the show and made a comment last week, and, and I pulled the winner out of a hat, and it, it was Mr. Phil Smith. So, uh, Phil, you're, you're, uh, you'll soon have a call. Uh, get, us, uh, get, your, get us your address. I think we have. Uh, well, you, you can have tell Mr. Smith, uh, Phil Smith, he's got the best grunt call because I own one. Yeah? I, oh, yeah. I love it. I used it last year. I called in five bucks last year in Jersey with that grunt call. And Mr. Wingbone makes some of the elite custom calls you can get. I, I loved it. And, and a lot of people, you know, I showed the people I hunt with, they're like, that's a grunt call. It looks like a flute. No, it's not a so, flute. So, so let's talk a little bit. Cause you said you were going to be hunting in Illinois, which is, you know, is in my backyard, really. Yep. Uh, what, and I know you're probably hunting closer to the rut, but what, what are the big differences uh, from New Jersey deer hunting and, say, hunting here in the Midwest, Illinois, for instance? It's, it's a totally big difference. Um, hunting here in Jersey, basically in New Jersey, I like to call it Jersey like everybody else does, um, it's easy to pattern deer because everything's so pushed into one little small area and you can pattern your deer. 
when I get out to Illinois, you're looking at big ground. And one thing I look at is draws, funnels, wind direction, and food source. Like I'm going out September 5th. I'm actually leaving September 4th, spending uh, seven to eight days out there for early archery season. And my um, my outfitter called me, goes, we got a good acorn crop. So guess what? They're not on food plots. Last year I was out there in the same time, early season, Rick, they were pounding food plots, clover, radishes, turnips, pounding them because there was no mass crop. This year, totally different. So I'm going to be hunting big timber, uh, getting on the acorns. Uh, the camera's going to be out, of course, you know, and hey, I'm going to keep everybody posted. I'll go live sitting in a stand when I'm out there this year because I'm really looking forward to this year for the early season in Illinois. Yeah, you know, and acorns, uh, especially the white oaks, uh, it's almost like deer candy. The, the deer yeah. absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, here in Iowa right now, it's a mixture of corn because it's, yep. it's, it's, it's you know, it's tender right now. And, uh, of course, uh, acorns. And we're already, some of our acorns are already starting to drop. Now, they're not full grown at this point, but there's a lot of them this year. So. Oh, yeah. And, and the, the, the best part about it, Rick, is, is um, when I was talking to the owner of the camp, and he's like, listen, he goes, I got three spots right now where I can get you into. He goes, but put it this way. Four years ago, he had the same mass crop of acorns. He was sending me pictures when I'm at work of 160s, 150s, 130s, 120s at 130 in the afternoon in October. Yeah. Just feeding. And I'm super, I'm, Rick, I'm telling you, I'm so super excited. I got a brand new boat this year. I'm all fitted out. I'm ready to go there and bring Team Alpen Bresser there. And you know what? You might get a, I'm going to film it. I'm going to try to. But it's Good. tough. Well, I hope you have tough some to solo, Oh, it's tough to solo film. You know that. So, yeah. how, how important do you think trail cam photos are for hunting early season? 100%. <clears throat> the most critical thing you ever want to do. You can learn the buck's habitat from early season, and then they vanish in late season. For instance, last year, which you know when he had me on the show, I had a buck that's called the G2 buck that made it. I had him all the way up to February. Still got pictures of him. Still got pictures of him. He hasn't showed back up yet, but I know he's a late season deer, so he's going to come back to his area in January or February. Early season, it's hard to predict because, you know, it's warm, number one. So your scent is going to be more 10 times the amount than when it's cold. And you got to really watch. So basically what I do is I focus on main food source, trails, and breast or cameras. And I pick out where I'm going to go. If the wind's right, I'm going there. Good. All right, well, listen, Mike, uh, we're going to cut you a little bit short today because we got a buddy of yours up uh, here in just a moment. But uh, I want I want to thank you for uh, jumping on. Uh, we actually had another guest tonight that uh, had to cancel. Uh, some work things came up, and and you guys uh, were you know eager to jump in, and I appreciate it. And, hey, Rick, and before awesome. before you cut me off, yeah, make sure you ask him for a recipe tonight. It's insane. Okay, well, I'll you got sure it. You got to do it. So anyways, and it, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's fine. And <laughs> actually, I, I need to ask you real quick, and I have to do this. Am I better looking than Mike McDonald? Every day, 24-7. <laughs> tell, tell Mike I said hello. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. Okay, well, hey, Mike, I appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for coming on, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, you know, Mike mentioned trail cams. We were talking a little bit about that, and, and we still have – our Bresser Trail Cam special going on. If you just go to the website, it's uh, buy one, get one free. And uh, I think they're running $40. Buy one, get one free. You buy two, you, you buy four, you get two free. I mean, it, it just works like that. So make sure you check that out. But uh, uh, anyways, I wanted to uh, go over to uh, our next guest, uh, Mr. Rich Fowerbach. Rich, how are you doing? Rick, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Well, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, Pennsylvania born and bred. 
I do a lot of hunting New Jersey with Mike. Um, hunted for some earlier stages of my life and then kind of took a break and then really got into it heavy uh, really after high school and really just been in love with it since. I got two kids, two daughters, and they're starting to reach an age where they're asking me to go hunting. So I'm hoping this year I actually get them out for some early squirrel hunting before our archery season gets going here in Pennsylvania. Good. What part of the state in Pennsylvania? Where are you at? East, real close, about 40 minutes from the New Jersey border. Okay. Well, you're you're way out there then. Yeah. Yeah. So what uh, what are your plans for the upcoming fall season? Well, like I said, first things I want to do before uh, we get into some archery and stuff is get my daughters out, do a little right. squirrel hunting. Um, and then Pennsylvania does have a pretty good youth mentorship program. So my oldest daughter might get her out uh, for the firearm season, see if she can get a deer. Um, October 2nd, statewide, our archery season opens, and you can guarantee I'll be in a stand for that. Good. Now, you know, Mike uh, Mike mentioned to me that uh, you're somewhat of a, of a skilled cook, and uh, he said you have a recipe that uh, uh, is, uh, well, just that we want to know about. So let's, uh, let's hear what you got. Okay, so this has been my go-to recipe this year for backstrap, and um, it's a backstrap crostini. And what I do is I take my backstrap, and you can really season it with whatever your favorite seasonings are, but I'll let that sit for a little bit on there. And then I'll grill that backstrap to about 130 degrees. If it goes over 130, I don't want to say you ruined it, but it's not going to be nearly as good if you pulled that thing off at 130. <clears throat> Then what I'll do is I'll take some onions and I'll put them in a pan with some butter and you got to slow cook them uh, for quite a while. I want to say a good 25 minutes, you're, you're going to be cooking these onions down and you put, put in some balsamic uh, vinegar with it and that starts to cook down and caramelize. And what you do is you take a real good bread, like a French bread, <clears throat> um, cut it, toast it, and you want to get some of your, some um, horseradish pub style dressing. It's like horseradish mayo. Put that on the bread, put your meat on it, and then top that off with those onions and you can't stop eating them. Mm, gosh, that, that sounds pretty good. I'm definitely have to going to have to give that a try. So we're yeah, always- Yeah, that's been uh, my, my go-to this year. Yeah, we're always looking for recipes here on the show. Uh, so, you know, Mike and I were talking a little bit about early season hunting and, and you're fairly close to Jersey, but- uh, I would imagine there's some differences from where you live and where he lives as far as early season hunting. I mean, first of all, your season doesn't come in until October, so about three weeks after after New Jersey. But what uh, what do you what I mean? What's your you know strategy come early season? So, for me, where I hunt in PA, it's a smaller piece of ground, and I know there's some. Um, some fields and stuff I don't have access in. Right now there's soybeans, so I'll go I'll go driving and spot and you can see bucks there. And I know they're well within range as far as traveling through this, the piece of property that I do hunt. Um, so I kind of look at this piece of property as almost a travel corridor. And what we'll do is we'll get some cameras up and we'll see what's coming through. And <clears throat> last year I kind of learned if you get a, a buck on camera, say one picture, we the buck I shot last year, we got on camera in September. One picture of him in September, we didn't see him the rest of the year. And once that rut hit, I got in a stand. It was kind of just like the right time to be in a stand. I got in a stand, that buck came through and I got him. So here I do a lot more kind of seeing what's in the area and then just kind of play in the area as far as uh, a travel corridor. And I really try and hit it harder during the rut. Right. I've, I've got a deer uh, that uh, it's, it's weird. It seems like every year I get tons of pictures of him early, like this time of year. And then about the first of November, I may see him the first couple of days of November and then he's gone and he disappears. If you don't, if, and if, I, if you're not able to get him then, and I, every year I think someone shot him and <laughs> sure enough, late season uh, after deer season's over and I leave my cameras out here he shows back up and this is just a weird thing. And I, and I know lots of other people that have experienced this sort of thing, but this deer is absolutely a giant and uh, I, yeah, maybe I'll get lucky this year. I don't know. I might, maybe I'll try to hunt him a little earlier. I generally here in Iowa, because I have to schedule a camera guy and all this, I, I usually don't start hunting uh, 
uh, for bucks until about the first of November. Uh, I like to hunt that that pre rut and, and rut just because of deer right. don't feed. Uh, so, but anyways, yeah. So, uh, and then uh, what now? When does your rut really get going? Is it is it kind of like ours? Is it in that you know that first few weeks of November? Or? Uh, I want to say well, last year it seemed like the I want to say it was around the tenth or so that I really started seeing stuff um, picking up. I where my house is, we, there's plenty of woods around me. And I was watching uh, buck ten doe from my backyard, and that's when I was I decided, okay, I have to be out in a tree right now. And next day is when I end up shooting that deer. But yeah, I want to say right around the tenth or so last year. So I'm kind of expecting the same thing this year. When when's your rifle season start? I mean, you guys are hunting with a gun during the rut, is that right? Yeah. So our well, our rifle season is in December, and I believe that it's usually the first. Well, it's the first Monday after Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. So you can bow yeah. on right through the rut then. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We we are kind of the same. We we don't we don't allow any rifle hunting. Well, straight wall rifles now, but uh, uh, we don't. Our first gun season isn't until the first weekend in December. Uh, we do have an early muzzleloader season and then a late muzzleloader season, but no uh, no gun hunting during the rut. Uh, like a lot of states, I mean, some states allow you to gun hunt during the rut. And, uh, right. you know, thank goodness that, that they don't allow that in Iowa because uh, we wouldn't have near as many big deer, you know. Right. So, um, but that's great. Are, are, now, do you, do you bow hunt and gun hunt or do you yep. just, you do? Yeah, and bow hunt, gun hunt. And uh, Mike and I do quite a bit of goose hunting. Love doing some goose hunting. Small game when I can. Um, but, yeah, I kind of hit it wherever I can. If I can get out in the woods, I usually am. Right. What uh, What about any fishing? You do any fishing out that way? Yeah. Yeah. Do some fishing. Uh, I should do do some fishing. Uh, Raritan Bay area some. Usually go on some trips with Mike. But yeah, there's some lakes this way. And uh, yeah. Yeah. In the off season. Right now, it's like, OK, I'm still trying to. You're kind of fighting that thing where you're like, OK, summer's not over. I still got stuff to do. It's not yet hunting season. But you're, you know, you're, you're kind of holding on to some fishing and stuff like that until until we can get out in the woods a bit right i, I don't know if it, in your area but i know pennsylvania has some uh a lot of trout fishermen uh is a pretty big yeah. you know, fly fisherman and stuff so and and we've got a few trout streams here in iowa but uh uh not not like what i understand they have out in pennsylvania so um but no that, i mean that's fantastic and how was your turkey season uh, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't do too much turkey hunting. I, I go with Mike some over in Jersey. I do know some guys over in PA here who do, do some turkey hunting, um, and they do pretty good with it. Pretty good. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, I, uh, you have any other recipes at all? Any, any quick, uh, quick <laughs> recipes you might want to share? Uh, yeah. So just a couple of weeks ago, you can make these with an onion or a pepper. The pepper, I think, tastes better. We just call it a pepper bomb. And it's really just a stuffed pepper. You take take a pepper. If it's a little spicy, it's it's even better. But then I took some um, some ground deer meat, and I took some bacon. You chop the bacon up, and when you're browning your deer meat, you put that bacon right in it to help keep it, keep it moist. And you season it just like you would any other burger, really. <clears throat> but then mix some onion in with that when you're seasoning it. Stuff that pepper, and then the whole pepper you wrap in bacon and throw on the grill, and you just kind of slow cook that until that pepper gets gets soft enough to to enjoy, and that that's a real good one too. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Rich. Uh, I'm, I'm I appreciate you and Mike jumping on and help me out tonight. Uh, kind of a spur of the moment thing, and and uh, this is the first time you've been on the show, and we'll try to get you on down the road again. But uh, for now, I. Wish you the best of luck this fall and, and let us know how your kids do. You know, they, they have any success. We'd sure like to see the photos. Oh, for sure. For so sure. Thanks for having you. me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I thank you. And, and uh, you know, before I get into the special, I just want to give a little shout out. I, there's We got all kinds of people on the show tonight, but Edwin and Stanley Tanner's on there and Becky Whitaker's on there, John Dallas. Uh, I saw Phil Smith on there a little while ago, uh, but we appreciate everybody getting on there and the comments and see Lori Smith's on there, Billy Burris, uh, Jordan Dean's on there. And if there was some questions, I, I certainly uh, overlooked them, but uh, uh, we'll try to get the answers uh, to you that have questions. But anyways, hey, I wanna jump into the weekly special. I, I love doing this because, you know, 
we have such great weekly specials and they really are bargains. Uh, but this week's uh, weekly special is, um, is the, uh, let me see here, is the wing, it's, it's the wing series binoculars. It's the model 546. Uh, it's a traditional dual bridge uh, design, which, which is easy to grip um, and uh, especially with glasses on, but it's the 10 by 42. Uh, they're fully waterproof. Uh, again, the wing series binoculars, 10 by 42s, regular price of $159.99 and on the hunt special uh, is $80. So $80 for a, for a good pair of binoculars and they're fully waterproof. So uh, again, they have the dual bridge design uh, and uh, I said glasses, uh, I need glasses to read this. Uh, easy to grip with gloves on, <laughs> not, not glasses on. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, uh, another great deal. All you have to do is go to BresserUSA.com or the Alpen uh, website and uh, just go ahead and order the model, uh, what do we say, 546 wing series binoculars and in the promo code, just put on the hunt. And generally it's in lower casing. I believe this time it's gonna be an upper casing, but no spacing, just on the hunt and you'll get the 50% uh, the off and they'll be priced at $80. That goes through Sunday at midnight. Uh, hey, hey, another uh, another great but, special. Uh, hey, Rick, but, if you uh, look on the screen, isn't that your daughter holding those binoculars this time? My daughter, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Paul, I didn't, I, and hear you very loud. We are you there? Isn't it on the screen? Isn't that your daughter holding those binoculars this time? On the screen. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen it, <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, uh, Paul. Paul comes up uh, a couple times a year, and we get together and we shoot some promos and some things. And and we had my daughter get in there and 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 actually used her as a model. And she'll be happy to know that you've got a picture of her there. That's. That's great. Uh, but um, so, uh, yeah, hey, appreciate you sharing that with me um, and helping me and helping me fill out the last two minutes of the show because I'm I'm, I'm getting to the point. Uh, that, uh, and, and it's good uh, every once in a while to, to talk to everybody. Paul's behind the scenes. He's the one that makes the show happen. I don't have any camera today because I, I just got out of the, I was in the hospital last weekend. The appendix. You had your appendix. Yeah, taken and then out. My, my appendix came out, you know, it's it's. So I had to get rid of that guy. He was not, uh, he was not helping me out very much at all. Yeah. You know, I've been through the same thing and, and uh, you know, fortunately for both of us, we bounced back. So it's good to see you back in the producer chair there. Well, and, uh, director. Yeah. I'm trying anyway. And we're I'm trying to do all this at the same time, but I tell you what, the, the comments today there, those guys are just going crazy in the comments this time. Yeah. Steve Herndon. I see he's watching now. So yeah, we got lots of people watching. Um, I have a guest, but I don't want to mention the guest because I, I'm not 100% sure he's going to be on next week. But I have a guest that you're going to definitely want to watch the show. A great, great deer hunter. Been around for years. And I've actually learned a lot from him uh, myself. But anyways, uh, hey, uh, thanks to uh, Paul for putting the show together. And Mike and Rich, uh, appreciate you guys jumping in and helping me out tonight. Uh, make sure you take advantage of that special, and we've got that trail cam deal still hey, going Rich. on. <clears throat> Rick, can I talk to you real quick? Yeah. Hey, just make sure that, you know, everybody knows the upcoming season is coming, 2021. Number one, tie off and be safe. Yep, yep, absolutely. Don't That's go one... to the stand without your hunter safe. Exactly, exactly, Rick. And the best part is if you're hunting solo, make sure you let people know where you're hunting. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, we've talked about that, and we'll and we'll continue to talk about it. But for yes. now, guys, we've run out of time. I appreciate your help. Uh, we'll see you next week, Wednesday, on the hunt with Alpen Optics. Good night, everybody. Let's talk a little bit about Alpen and Bresser Optics. Now they have a full line of optics, but what I wanna to talk to you now about is rangefinders. They have several different varieties of handheld rangefinders and the new bow rangefinder. Now for you bow hunters, 
you go ahead and sight in at 20 yards and you calibrate it to your 20 yard pin. And when you're at full draw, whatever you point in that 20 yard pin on an object, it'll tell you the yardage. So whether you like a handheld or you wanna put one on your bow, we have both options for you here at Alpen and Bresser Optics. You know, here we are midsummer here in Iowa, and I'm, uh, I'm just out doing some scouting, glass and deer, uh, kind of taking an inventory of what I've got and uh, doing it from a distance. I've got one of the new Alpen spotting scopes. It's a 20 by 60. But one of the things I really like about this, it comes with a tripod and it's got micro adjustments. So it's real easy to zoom in and, and move around uh, and find those animals. But uh, basically, uh, this is a great tool to help me manage the farm all year round. If you're looking for a, a great way to do some scouting, do it in the evening from a distance with a nice spotting scope.